Hello, it is April 28th. Welcome to Creative You Podcast. It's about knitting and crocheting and life in general. I'm your host, Katherine Kirby. Today, I would like to talk about those yarns that split and make knitting or crocheting your project an unhappy experience. So, I have been showing you this baby ripple blanket with Cascade Whirly Gig. And a couple days ago, I would have told you, don't get this yarn. Now I've changed my mind because it's gotten so soft and it feels great. So it's been worth it. I also mentioned that there were some spots of other colors that came through. There's a green spot somewhere and so sometimes on facebook i'll see somebody post oh this yarn was crap and blah 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 and i'll never get it again and you shouldn't get it let me say this if you have trouble with a yarn call the yarn shop where you bought it and ask for advice because most of the time they're going to make that right maybe you just got a bad skein so if you look here there's some color that's rubbed off. So I contacted Cascade and they said, no problem, they'll replace it. Let them know if any other skeins have problems. So when you're crocheting or knitting and you begin to realize the yarn is defective, stop right there. Because don't keep knitting or crocheting if you're not happy with it contact the yarn company. Don't put a post on social media and give the yarn a bad name and see what resolution can happen. If the yarn shop doesn't give you any answers, then contact the yarn company. So the last time we met, I had the second color of orange done. Now I did the blue and now I did the green. The blue didn't last very long and I knew I wasn't going to have enough for um, another row so I just cut that off I use it for something else it is starting to curl and I'm not I'm not sure why it's like stop it <laughs> so this yarn has been splitting and you get so frustrated. One thing I've found, if I keep my thumb and finger at the bottom of the work as I'm pulling through, that helps a lot. So I don't know how much you can see this yarn. Oh, I just lost my project to the floor. But I found an excellent article and I'm kind of surprised that I've, now I have my yarn wound around my shoe <laughs> that I'm kind of surprised I've never heard this explained before. So this is in Winter 2014 Crochet Magazine where they explain that yarn is either a Z-twist or an S-twist. When they finish the yarn, they give it a final tug in one direction or the other. Um... The most yarn is an S twist. So an S looks like an S, a Z looks like that. Most yarns that we work with are S twist. Crochet threads and um, sewing threads tend to be Z twist. So how can you tell? Well, if you look at the yarn, if you hold the yarn vertically, you can start to see a little diagonal line that goes through there. This is definitely S, I believe. So if you are a right-hander, every time you're pulling the yarn, yarn over and pulling it through, you are untwisting the yarn, thus having it lead to unraveling or what we call splitting. So it can be very annoying and, or if you pull out yarn and your fingers are running over it as you pull it, you could essentially be untwisting it. Also, if you're ripping out, 
pulling the yarn, winding it, rewinding it, you can be untwisting the yarn. So um, it gets worse under certain conditions if uh, the yarn is a loose S-twist to begin with, if the stitch pattern is open and lacy, if the gauge is loose for the yarn, so you're using a bigger hook, if there are many tall stitches with multiple yarn overs, and when they say tall stitches, are you aware, crocheters, that you're either a, a caterpillar or a butterfly? You either keep your, your hook low, your stitches low. So when I teach <laughs> this yarn tall wound around my shoe, if I teach someone to crochet, they put their hook in and they keep that stitch down so low that they can't get the thread through. So I have to teach them to lift up. But some people who we call lifters, I call them the butterflies, lift up way too high. If you do that and you get in the pattern of doing that and you go to do a garment you're, and you measured your gauge, your gauge is okay width wise, but height wise, it's not working out. Maybe it says 22 rows and four inches and you have 19s because you're lifting and you're making stitches taller. If it's not a garment, it really doesn't matter. And if the same section has been ripped out over and over again, the splitting is worse. Um, so, I mean, don't stay away from s twist yarns. They're all over the place, but to minimize it, try not to wind and rewind. Try not to pull out large quantities of yarn, running your fingers over it, and pay attention to how you pull the yarn from the skein to how it's wound, because if it's in a hank, and it's wound at the yarn shop, they may be kind of unwinding the S-twist while they're winding it. Again, I find if I keep my um, fingers down here as I pull up, I feel keeping that traction on it helps. So we'll review this again later because it seems like a lot to take in. S-twist, Z-twist, what's going on? It can kind of befuddle your mind. So what am I wearing today? This, you know how everybody has their favorite, this thing is stuck on my shoe. Everybody has their favorite things. This is one of my favorites. I don't know, I just love the colors. It's a soft cotton, I love the way it feels. This is a Nora yarn called Ginga. Ginga means galaxy. It is 40% cotton, 30% silk, 15% wool, and 15% nylon. Comes in earthy tones, bright colors. I mean, I have lots of colors at the shop. It sells for $20. This is a one skein project. And believe it or not, I had all these stitches stuffed on it. <laughs> a 14 inch needle and when I cast off all of, all of this started coming off it's amazing I didn't do it in the round but it's a knitting fever pattern it's very easy I did this in an evening if it's cold out or you so like you can double it so there you go so more exciting news well now that this is my third one of these I think I'm gonna alter the pattern because I don't like the way it pops out there in the middle. I'm gonna put less stitches in there and see what I can do. You can also make them with little animals coming out. They call those loveys, but I was thinking, this is definitely an S-twist yarn because this does split. Okay. What do you think? I had a yellow picked out, but this has a lot of yellow in it. And if it were up against rows of yellow, I think it would affect the pattern. 
It does have some spring green in it, so I could pick that up. It has pinks and purples, so I can't stop making these blankets. I think they're a great size to lay the baby on for changing, wrap the baby up. You can make them smaller for um, car seats. So look what came today. Um, of course, the shop is closed. I had the door locked. I heard rat-a-tat-tat at the back door, and it's the FedEx guy. He always calls me honey. So I had read Debbie McComber's The Yarn on Blossom Street. If you've ever read that, she has a yarn shop. She's single, and she falls in love with the FedEx guy. So I've often been tempted to tell him I'm married. <laughs> Here's the latest interweave knits. You know, I listened to one of my podcasts and you can hear the dog lapping water, the dog walking around. Oh, well, it is our house. So isn't this pretty? I actually forgot it. Locked the yarn shop. I'm out in the car getting ready to drive home and I'm, ah, oh, I gotta go back in and get these magazines. 13 elegant patterns. I love the shirt on the front. I've never understood why a lot of patterns for summer tops are done with worsted weight yarns. I would think you'd want something lightweight, something that isn't hot. So let's look at the book. There is a long sleeve sweater with an asymmetrical design that's just lovely. There it is. And that is called the Enanti Omer Pullover. I'm not sure what that word means. Here is Tropical Knits, it's called. And then on this page, there's two other garments. The Tropical Knit Open Work Lace Color Work Delightful for. Now there is a top that ties in the back. And you know, way back in history when women wore shawls, that's how they wore the men, ladies, men, I need a haircut. And all the shops are closed. And the last time I cut my own hair, it wasn't good. And you know, even if it doesn't look too bad the first time you wash it you have hair sticking out everywhere that you did not cut right so i don't want to do that again there's another long top that's called the monsoon tea by susan ic i love susan ic's there's another long top that would be a nice bathing suit cover up too in a bright, cheerful yellow. I had done a podcast on yellow. How many of you have yellow garments? Here's a shawl with different colored ties. That's unique. And different ways to wear it. Here's the summer top. Oh, isn't that pretty? That's the back. I want to make that for sure. Uh, the Golden Tam Tamarin Tea by Rachel Brockman, done in True Sport Cotton. This is different. How you have the little ruffles part way down the sweater. Oh, this makes me think of summertime, cool weather. And here is another gorgeous top with kind of like a pleat down the back. So it looks like tops are either cropped or they're long. Here's the golden colored top that we saw. And the sleeves are, the sleeves and the top are patterned with the open lace work. And then look at this. Another crop top. That's called Peace Lily Blouse by Jennifer Miller Comstock. The Hornbill Tea. That sounds like the name of a bird. That is lacy and very pretty. Uh, lace lovers will love the Hornbill Tea. Doesn't really say why it's called that. 
And then here's another lacy top sweater. I think they like to knit things in yellow and gold in magazines because um, they look very bright and appealing. And there's another sweater that's lacy. So, I mean, if you don't do lace or you don't do something fancy, you basically just end up with a plain sweater. A primer on knitted lace and then the patterns. So... Yep, so that is the latest Interweave Knit Books, and our time together is up, and have a great evening. Thank you for watching. Keep that beautiful smile, and shine, baby, shine.